To perform meaningful diffraction analysis, it's typical to use the microscope stage to orient the specimen or part of the specimen to what is called a zone axis orientation. This just means that a certain crystallographic plane in the crystal is perpendicular to the beam direction. When the sample is set up this way, the diffraction pattern should be symmetric around the OOO beam. Each spot in the pattern corresponds to reflections or scattering from a specific crystallographic plane in the sample. The pattern contains information about the angles between the different planes, as well as the distance between them. The distance between different diffraction spots in the pattern is inversely related to the distance between those crystalline planes, also known as the despacing. Strain is a measure of physical deformation and is given by the ratio between change in length and the original length of an object, or in our case, the crystal in the TEM sample. Strain can be measured in different crystallographic axes, i.e. in-plane or out-of-plane, and can be tensile or compressive. If we can measure variations in the positions of diffraction spots from a strain region of the sample, compared to their position in a diffraction pattern from a region with no strain, we would be able to calculate the strain in the sample. The strain mapping technique in Digital Micrograph does exactly this. It first calculates a reference diffraction pattern from a user-defined reference area in the sample, then compares the diffraction patterns in the 4D stem data, pixel by pixel, to this reference image, measures the change, and outputs the strain. The sample data here was captured from a multi-layer thin film sample, very common in the semiconductor industry. The layers in the data are pure silicon followed by layers of germanium doped silicon. Adding germanium atoms to the silicon induces strain in the silicon lattice, which is directly related to the volume fraction of germanium. In this specific test sample, the silicon germanium layers have increasing germanium concentration as we go away from the substrate, and we expect to see the same trend in the strain measurement. Let's start by looking at a diffraction pattern in this dataset. I'll use the picker tool to extract a diffraction pattern from the substrate. The substrate in this data is at the top. As I move the picker tool down along the growth direction and through the layers, you can see that the diffraction pattern appears to breathe, which is a good indication that the distance between the spots is changing, so we expect there to be some measurable strain in this sample. Start by opening the strain mapping technique. As with other techniques, we just need to follow the workflow and go from top to bottom. First, we need a reference pattern for the strain measurement. If I right click on the dataset to the left of the picker tool, there is another tool with a green U icon. This tool can be used to specify the unstrained region in the sample. Select the tool and draw a box in the substrate region. The software will sum the diffraction patterns from this region to generate the reference. If we didn't specify a reference region, the software will just sum up to 2000 diffraction patterns from the whole dataset as the reference, in which case the reference is the mean diffraction pattern. Here the strain results would be relative to this average instead of an absolute comparison to a region that we defined as unstrained. Next, click on reference. Once calculated, the software will display the reference diffraction image. This image contains ROIs, shown in red, that define the reciprocal lattice vectors, U and V. These will be used as the base vectors to find spot positions in all the patterns. A third circular green ROI defines the subset of diffraction spots that we want to include in the calculation. Let's continue with the setup. Move the center ROI onto the OOO spot. Resize so it's large enough to include a margin around the visible disk, but avoid overlaps and close proximity to other diffraction disks. The size of this circle defines the area used for generating a diffraction disk template. Now move the U and V circles onto the reflections which correspond to directions in which you want to calculate the strain. In this example, I'm selecting V as the growth direction and making U the in-plane direction. 
The U and V vectors will be used as the unit vectors that define the position of the spot array in the diffraction patterns. The circle size will be used as the search radius when Digital Micrograph is looking for the spot centers in this array. Finally, resize the large green ROI to only include spots with high enough signal to noise ratio for reliable identification and tracking. I've adjusted the display gamma a little bit here to help me see some of the fainter spots more easily. The software automatically weights the effect of the spots in the strain calculations based on their intensity, but the very weak spots should just be excluded as they just increase the data processing time and don't improve accuracy in the result. Instead of using the reference pattern we just generated, there is an additional option to use any other diffraction pattern open in the software. If you want to do this, it's important to make sure that the data was collected with the same microscope conditions. In particular, the same probe forming aperture, the same camera length, the same detector. Otherwise, using the data as a reference doesn't really make sense. If you want to use this feature, you can make your selection from the drop down menu right next to Use, as I'm showing here. That's all for the reference image, so now we're ready to calculate the disk template. This is a very important step, as a disk template will be used later in the cross correlation routine to find the position of all other diffraction disks and measure the change in their spacings. Fortunately, there isn't much to do here, just click on disk. The software will use up to 2000 diffraction patterns in the dataset and then outputs an average disk template. Now we have everything we need for the strain calculation, but there are a few important points to cover before moving on. If you click on the setup icon in the top right corner of the strain mapping window, you can enter the diffraction pattern rotation angle. This is useful because in most cases, there is a rotation between imaging and diffraction modes in the microscope. The software outputs strains in the XY directions of the diffraction image, while we are typically interested in the strain in real space directions. The same is happening in our example here. The growth direction, which we identified as V, is 35 degrees offset from the X direction in the diffraction image. So I need Digital Micrograph to rotate the diffraction pattern 35 degrees counterclockwise. The output strain in the X direction will then correspond to the strain in the growth direction, which is what we want to measure. If your 4D stem data has a large number of pixels and you also decide to include a large number of reflections in the green circle used for the strain calculations, the calculation will take several minutes or more for the software to output the strain maps. As I mentioned already, Avoid including reflections with weak signal in the green ROI to improve calculation speed. The calculation time can also be reduced by increasing the sampling interval from one to a larger value. The number of pixels in real space will be skipped and you'll get strain maps quicker, but the compromise is a reduction in spatial resolution. Subsampling like this is a useful pre-processing or quick analysis step to screen the data. This is particularly beneficial mid-experiment on the microscope to verify the experimental setup is good for strain mapping. OK, let's click Calculate. The software immediately generates four two-dimensional images labeled EXX, EYY, EXY and Rotation and then starts populating these images pixel by pixel. EXX and EYY are the strain in the X and Y directions. Remember, this is the XY coordinate of the diffraction image with the rotation applied. A nice way to compare maps from spectrum imaging and 4D stem data is to colorize. It's also possible to go on and overlay in some cases where overlaying makes sense. I've colorized three of the maps already. 
For demonstration, I'll colorize the fourth map by selecting a different color table from within the image info window, as you can see here. Once you have the color maps, intensity bars can be added by right clicking, navigating to the layout menu, and clicking add intensity bar. This is a useful way to link the color intensity to a meaningful strain value. Positive values correspond to tensile strain. Negative values correspond to compressive strain. Strain is dimensionless, so is usually reported as a percentage. During the setup, we defined vector V as being in the growth direction of the sample. A minus 35 degree rotation was applied, so the strain in the X direction of the diffraction pattern corresponds to the strain in the growth direction. As expected, the strain in the growth direction increases. The germanium concentration is increasing in this direction, which would increase the strain, so the result makes sense. EYY corresponds to strain in the in-plane direction, and as expected, is close to zero.